Advent has always been about waiting and watching and doing so in the dark. I don't know whether I dislike the winter more because of the dark or the cold. I don't like either one of them. But we all know how dark it gets early -er, until, you know, the winter solstice. And uh, our church purposely places the uh, feast of Christmas close to the winter solstice because every day after the winter solstice, we gain a little bit more light minute by minute by minute. And the Pope at the time that the feast was established said that's what's the miracle of Christmas, that the light came into the world and made the world lighter and brighter with each passing day. Uh, conversely, in Advent, the world gets darker and darker every minute. Then we invented that, I don't know, standard time thing, and we jumped a whole hour. And then, boom, the dark really takes over. It's one of the beauties of Christmas anticipation to see the lights in the dark when people decorate their homes. and uh, The lights on the tree, which used to be candles, uh, were meant to bring a little light in the dark of these very dark uh, weeks in nature. Well, we have a very uh, appropriate, unfortunately, season of Advent this year because there's a lot of dark around. And I don't mean just to be poetic, but there's a lot of dark stuff. We don't need to go through it. We're all living it on a lot of levels and a lot of ways. And even if we weren't in the middle of what we are in the middle of, everybody has their dark days anyway. And sometimes it can stand for a long time. And Advent is a good experience, not just with the climate, but also in the climate of the times, that these are dark days. That's what the first reading was pretty much about, that there were dark days in Israel. And um, they felt like God, they said, the prophet said, it's like you have hidden your face from us. That's why the psalm said, let us see your face, and then we shall be saved. And that bright face, of course, is the resurrected Christ. So in these dark times, either personally and or globally, we as believers look for the face of the Lord. And even when we look, we see him suffering in a lot of ways in others uh, who are suffering with the stuff of this pandemic, but also with the stuff of the effects. Hardworking people who earn their way are now in food lines. The poor only got poorer, and the lines are even more. Uh, they're, they're longer. Uh, everybody might feel the pinch, and if your pinch is a pinch, notice it's a pinch and it's not, you know, a punch in the stomach, economically or emer emotionally. So that's a pretty bleak picture, and it coincides with this bleak <clears throat> time, but not without hope. That's the difference here. For us who believe, we say, well, it's not, it's not all bad. It's that, which only points to the need for the Savior, the bright light inside of us that was given to us in baptism, and we say, not in a poetic way, but in a real way. I'm going to hang on to him with all I can. 
and make it a holy season. We're supposed to make every Advent a holy season. We have more reason to do that today. And we're supposed to do something to increase the light in the middle of this darkness every year, but this year is without, without any argument. The reason to pass on and make the world a little lighter and brighter. We are supposed to be very busy feeding the poor. There are a lot of poor people now. Many of you have been very generous with uh, Thanksgiving. We're asking you more food items, bring it in here, for the poor and the working poor, some of whom live in Cherry Hill, where the church is asking us in Advent to be more generous to the Christ that is suffering. And there's a lot of different ways we can do it. But then to take it out of sentimentalism, because people are very generous, usually, and it's the time to do that. But please remember to bring more food in January and in February and in March. Clean your cupboards of the extras. Feel the pinch a little. You're going to feed someone. There are other charity, works of charity that we are called to do, but a lot of us can't and shouldn't. Talk more over coffee with somebody. Well, they're telling us to be careful. <laughs> well, we can't do that. But then there's the telephone. And from what I hear, a thing called Facebook. <laughs> and to use it to lift people. Maybe take 15 minutes every day, even after a hard days of a day of work or whatever, and Facebook, call somebody that you know, or who knows you, but spend a little bit of time and make it an Advent thing. And then remember to do it in January, February, <laughs> and March. Because even though we gain a minute each day after the solstice, uh, it's only a minute each day. And people are fatigued, even though they know it's going to get brighter later. It ain't helping right now with food or with an uplifting word. And if you do it, God bless you. And if you do it more, God bless you more. There's a lot, there are a few ways, rather, of being more generous in a different way than we maybe were, were or have been doing throughout our lives every year, but I mean, especially in Advent. Our Lord asks us to be mindful, and we are very mindful that it is darker, and he is suffering in a lot of people in new ways than we would have imagined this time. Last Advent was a typical Advent. <laughs> Everybody was scurrying around doing what they do and being generous then, too. But now we're called to do it even more, to make it a holier season in our way of where the needs are. We need to do something about the human spirit uh, you write a letter. People don't write letters anymore. Or make an, get, get an extra box of Christmas cards and write out a few things to a few other people to lift up their spirits. Even to an unknown person. Write a Christmas card to somebody in a nursing home. Uh, give it to me. <laughs> I'll give it to them. Uh, they may not ever get a card but it lifts them up. Make it bright and beautiful so that it stands on that one little stand that they have and it brightens them up. I've seen Christmas cards that are still there in April 
May because it still does the trick. So there are simple but profoundly human ways that we can do that, make this Advent different, particularly generous, to meet the Lord where he is actually right now. He actually comes here, and we take him in here to take him out there. Let us make concrete ways uh, to take care of and particularly the people that we don't know, but our people in the works of charity that we can do safely and over the long haul and get rid of the darkness as much as possible, especially in their own hearts and in their own families. May God bless you all.